I'm Jason Yu, Assistant Manager Technology from CRSSC in Hong Kong. My team is mainly focused on clinical research and patient service by using uh, advanced technology. And 3D printing is one of our main tools on dealing with different um, patients' condition. We usually tailor make some different devices and different aids for them to achieve the basic and essential purpose. Okay, so uh, in 2014, 3D printing is introduced to different conditions in Hong Kong due to the customization feature and easy accessibility. Well, I'm still an undergrad at that time, but because my background is engineering, so, so I kind of touching 3D printing and 3D scanning at that time. Okay, so there are many experts in healthcare 3D printing. As mentioned, we are a rehab center, so we mainly focus on this aspect. Okay. Yes, the uh, implant and prosthesis. This is a DM case. Uh, uh, around 60 years old woman who got DM and have to amputate their hand, their, uh, her hand to save her life. And we designed and 3D print a mechanical prosthesis for her so she can do the daily living. And also the Asifitis uh, Ace, this is the wheelchair chin cup mount because some Tetra cases who cannot use, um, I mean, the reliable uh, rela head control or foot control. So their only voluntary control is their chin. So we designed this chin cup for them to control the wheelchair joystick. And then this is the robotic knee sensors. This is the, the scientific research. Because uh, in Hong Kong, there are some polio cases, then we are designed the robotic knee for the polio cases. And the sensor, I mean, the sensor identification module is quite vital in, uh, in the, I mean, the research. So we designed this uh, insole so the sensors can embed in the insole to achieve the optimum um, sensing procedure. And the last one is the reverse engineering, which is a 3D scan. 3D scan the model into the computer so we can be modeling or so, so called do, do different uh, analysis, something like that. And then it comes to a dilemma. Why are, you, why, why are we using 3D printing instead of conventional approach su such as a spin tape or remodable plastic? And our concerns are in four fold. The first one is customization. The second one is durability, and the third one is appearance, and last one is accuracy. Those mentioned items are the, our main concern when we face dilemma to see whether we choose 3D printing or we, cho we, or we choose to use the conventional approach research uh, spinning method. And this is the outline today. Uh, I will, this is my the presentation outline, and there are two uh, real case scenarios here. So this is our team, team's workflow. Since we are not clinician, we are, and clinicians are not engineer, we have to co cooperate to see what's their expectation as well as patient's thought. Therefore, therapists would carry out the case meeting together with us so we can get more familiar with the situation so as to facilitate our design protocol. And then this is our project procedure after we met with the clients, we designed the solution together with the um, therapist command and come up with a uh, protocol. Then we carry out the patient trial and we find it as the final product. And this is our first case scenario. And then as you can see here, uh, yes, this is the first case scenario. A then stroke quadriplegia bed bound patient with low speech ability and limited body movement. After therapist assessment, the clients can only move his thumb voluntarily, and that's the only movement component that we can find. Then our project goal is to allow him to control the electric bed independently with audio feedback as an indication to let him know the direction of the bed. Since the bed is suited with CE standard, we don't want to violate the control. Otherwise, we can just crack the control and then we do some electronics there, but we don't want to make it because the bed is um, sorted. So we aimed it at using a concept called con hardware control hardware. And then we figured out a control method that 
the high frequency audio represent the bad down and low frequency audio represent the bad up as illustrated here. So this is not the patient, this is the, um, this is my assistant colleague. Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, so as you can see in the video, there are two, two pitches. One is high frequency and the one is lower. So when you want to say, uh, when you want to back down, then you have to release the single switch during the uh, high, uh, sorry, low frequency audio. Then this is how it's work. Okay, so then we deal with the control part with the electronics using the motor and Arduino's, and then we have to mark it on the remote control as we call and hardware control hardware. Then we have to control the, uh, sorry, we have to ensure the 3D, mount, uh, 3D mounting is perfect fit with the control and the mount is able to resist the moment talk. Finally, we choose to use ABS to print the mount because it's so-called more durable. And we give it a try with the target clients, then we refine the design afterward based on the observation and Keras comment. And you can see here, this is the control, and then we 3D pin the mount, the 3D mount here, and this is the surface motor to control the button. Okay, and then this is uh, our final product with a wider opening. And this is the real case scenario, this is the real stand, uh, real stand stroke, uh, quadriplegic black bound patient. Okay. Since, since we come from Hong Kong, so all the wordings in the in the video is Cantonese. Okay. So um this is the second case scenario, a trip mount for window cases. So we do receive many inquiries from clients who have to undergo hemodialysis and some window nurse about how to carry out the wind, uh, hemodialysis independently at home. From those who don't know the situation, uh, hemodialysis usually take around six to eight hour days and two to three times a week. This is very, very time consuming, even not under a pandemic, because in the pandemic, um, because in the pandemic, the, the clients don't want to go to the hospital or clinic to undergo the hemodialysis. So the so-called volume is increased a lot for these years. And then, uh, by the way, our design used to attend the uh, Australian conference in 2019. So for our drip mark, we have a few uh, criteria to take into account, uh, including the durability, uh, sterilization, blood incorporation, arm contour and injection location, especially the blood cooperation and sterilization, because we have to ensure there are no contamination during the hemodialysis. As you can see here, this photo, this is the uh, ABS drip mount model. And uh, after we soak it into a red dye, as you can see, there are some dye that so-called invade into the uh, ABS uh, model structure. And that is um, undesirable. Okay, so um, yes, so we use 3D printing and 3D uh, scanning in this project. Since the muscle are soft tissue, they may alter their shape according to their posture. Therefore, we use 3D scan. We use 3D scanner to scan the client's arm contour or contour at their home be, uh, to ensure the perfect fitting. Then we use the CAD software to do the sketch and modeling. So as you can see here, this is, sorry, the orange one is the arm. And the one here, this two is the injection location. This two is the injection location of the chip. Okay, and finally, we used to choose the resin as the material. Since FDA material, like ABS, nylon, or, or um, PLA, will cause blood incorporation. And also, SLA technology provide a better surface finishing. 
and that's why we choose the vaccine. And after that, we develop a so-called standard item, which is the most common one. So um, if there are any in, uh, uh, inquiry on these circumstances, we could first issue one trial model to them. If they think it don't work, then we will ask them to come to our center so we can do the tailor-made model for them. And you can see uh, so far we have done around 15 to 20 tailor-made items to different patients in terms of different injection angle and different injection size or uh, multiple chip. And this is a tailor-made model that we have done recently. Normally the injection, this is the video we can see here. And normally the injection direction would parallel to the forearm. However, the patient used to receive the uh, implanted vascular graph, which perpendicular to the forearm, as you can see, this is perpendicular to the forearm direction. And this greatly increased the difficulty in stability because the, the arm contour is so-called edge on the arm, edge is a cliff, which, um, which have no more, uh, I mean, have, have less support than the um, conventional approach. So the ladies here can use the standard item. Then we have to design a so-called um, tailor-made item for them, uh, for her. Okay, and this, okay, this is also a video. And this the multiple canal holders that allow patient to perform the hemodialysis procedure independently. As you can see, the ladies here are using the left hand to do the injection, but they can't use the right hand simultaneously during the, I mean, during the procedure. Because you can see here, there are two jib. We actually cannot hold this in the same time. Okay, to sum up, and the advantage of 3D printing in rehab field is similar to the 3D printing, uh, I mean, the advantage of 3D printing in industrial field. Where we should make more use of the feature of 3D printing and scanning to improve the quality of our patient service. And this is the end of my presentation. And please feel free to ask me a question. Thank you.